Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today I welcome all my students of second year MBBS and BDS to today's lecture regarding the posterior pituitary gland, its relation to hypothalamus. The posterior pituitary gland is also known as the neurohypophysis. Why? Because it is more like neuro neuronal cells which are the glial cells given the name the pituocytes. Now the pituocytes they do not secrete hormones but they act simply as a supporting structure for large number of terminal nerve fibers and terminal nerve endings from nerve tracts which originate in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of hypothalamus, hypothalamic hypophysial tract. Now, These tracks they pass to neurohypophysis via pituitary stalk and the nerve endings. They are bulbous nodes. They are containing many secretory granules, which end uh, on the surfaces of capillaries and secrete two hormones: that is, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin hormone. See how these hormones they are being produced over there in the hypothalamic nuclei and via. Then the hypothalamic hypophysial tract it reaches the posterior pituitary gland over there it is stored and is secreted when the need that is required see this is hypothalamo hypophysial stalk how they are reaching the posterior pituitary gland now we should be knowing grossly about the physiological functions of anterior pituitary gland as well as the majority of the cells they are somatotrophs that is about 30 to 40 percent of the cells and they release the growth hormone the single chain 191 amino acids stimulating the body growth stimulating secretion of insulin like growth factor one stimulating the lipolysis inhibiting the action of insulin and carbohydrate and lipid metabolism Corticotropes, they release the ACTH, they are single chain amino acid of 39 in number, stimulating production of glucocorticoids and androgens by adrenal cortex and maintains the zona fasciculata and zona reticularis size as well. Thyrotropes, they are releasing the thyroid stimulating hormone, which is glycoprotein in nature and stimulates the thyroid hormones and the production by thyroid follicles maintains the size of follicular cells. Gonadotrophs, which are two, that is the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Both of them, they are glycoprotein in nature. One is stimulating the ovarian follicle development, regulating the spermatogenesis in the testes. And the luteinizing hormone is going to lead to ovulation, formation of corpus luteum in ovary and stimulates the Estrogen and progesterone by ovary stimulates the testosterone production by testes. Lectotropes release prolactin, single chain amino acid, stimulates the milk secretion and milk production. See how the growth hormone that is affecting the adipose tissue, the liver, the muscle. In detail, we are going to learn about it later on, but we should be knowing about that it is going to decrease the glucose uh, uptake and it is going to. Uh, increase lipolysis and is going to decrease the adiposity whereas in liver it is increasing the protein synthesis uh, insulin like growth factors insulin like growth factor binding proteins the muscles they are going to decrease the glucose uptake increase amino acid uptake and protein synthesis is going to increase the lean body mass and they do have the effect over there in the bone heart lung chondrocytes bones they're going to increase the organ size as well as organ function in kidney, pancreas, intestine, isles of Langerhan, parathyroid, skin, connective tissue. Whereas in the quadrocytes, it is going to increase the protein synthesis, RNA synthesis, DNA synthesis, collagen, the cell size, the number, the chondroitin sulfate. So each and everything they're going to increase in size. See? There is sodium retention, decreased insulin sensitivity, lipolysis, insulin-like growth factor 1, protein synthesis, epiphyseal growth. And um, now abnormalities of the growth hormone secretion, see, 
uh, there is pan hypopituitarism there is decreased secretion of all the anterior pituitary hormones which may be congenital present at the time of birth or it may occur suddenly or slowly at any time during life most often it results from a pituitary tumor that destroys the pituitary gland dwarfism pan hypopituitarism during childhood all the physical parts of the body develop in appropriate proportion to one another but the rate of development is greatly decreased a child who has reached the age of 10 years appears to be of that of 4 years age the pan pituitary hypo uh, pituitarism a person it does not pass through puberty and it never is going to secrete the gonadotropic hormone so one third of the um, dwarves however they have just a growth hormone deficiency and they can mature sexually and occasionally they reproduce as well and there is no adrenocortical thyroid deficiency there because of the small size of the body there is less requirement of ACTH and TH in most of the dwarves there is retardation of sexual function because of less FSH and LH but in one third of the dwarves there are normal sexual function and they are able to reproduce now human growth hormone obtained by recombinant DNA technology may prove to be a beneficial one now African pygmies and Levy Lorraine dwarfs it is very frequently asked question in vivas as well in this type of dwarfism the rate of growth hormone secretion is normal or high but there is hereditary inability to form somatomidine C which is a key step for the promotion of growth by growth hormone in some doors growth hormone secretion is adequate but there is defect in the growth hormone receptor so growth hormone receptors they are unresponsive and they are given the name of florian dwarfs now frequently asked question is that we should be able to uh, compare and contrast between the creatinism um, of hypothyroid as well as that of the pituitary dwarfs uh, Cratinism in hypothyroidism uh, thyroid in childhood and uh, growth is not proportionate. There is big protruded abdomen, pot belly, there is protruded tongue, saliva dribbling, there is in pituitary dwarfism, proportionate growth that is there. Cratins, they are mentally retarded, whereas the pituitary dwarfs, they're intelligent. They cratins, they can never, uh, they are most of the times, they cannot reproduce, whereas the pituitary dwarves, one third of them, they are fertile. See? Now, pan hypopituitarism in adults is given the name of Simmons disease. Now, two tumorous conditions like craniopharyngiomas or chromoform tumors, they may compress the pituitary gland until the functioning anterior pituitary cells are totally destroyed. The third cause is thrombosis of pituitary blood vessels. This abnormality occurs when a new mother develops circulatory shock after the birth of a baby. In these patients, there is adrenocortical and thyroid hormones deficiency. Because decreased ACTH and TSH patients, they have hypoglycemia, hypotension, hyponatremia, intolerance to cold, there is weight gain. Because of deficiency of SH, uh, FSH and LH, it gives rise to atrophy of primary sex hormones. There is sexual retardation. In females, there is disturbance of menstrual cycle. There is growth of tissue retardation. Thus, the picture is that of a lethargic person from lack of thyroid hormone who is gaining weight because of lack of fat mobilization by the growth hormone. Uh, has lost uh, all sexual functions as except for the abnormal sexual functions treatment is the patient can usually be treated satisfactorily by giving the adrenocortical and thyroid hormones now Sheehan syndrome is one of the very important she uh, uh, syndrome which is frequently asked and is seen in females what happened is that during the course of pregnancy that because of the more requirement the pituitary gland increases and is that's why at more risk of ischemia now what happened is that during the course of after delivery trauma or hemorrhage there is ischemic necrosis of pituitary gland and it results uh, sometimes delivery results in severe blood loss and the shock develops interior arteriolar spasm hypotension and blood supply to pituitary decreases all features of hypopituitarism may be present and the symptoms vary according to extent and location of gland damage to pituitary stalk if connection 
between hypothalamus and anterior pituitary is lost due to some damage secretion of all anterior pituitary gland hormones decrease except prolactin because of loss of uh, prolact uh, PIF prolactin inhibitory factor prolactin secretion increases hyperprolactinemia it causes medications um, medications like dopamine can do it pituitary stalk related disorders prolactin releasing adenomas in anterior pituitary gland causes amenorrhea as a normal pulsatile manner of gonadotrophin releasing hormone is suppressed prevention of positive feedback effects of estrogen so no subsequent LH surge can lead to galactoria in men can lead to galactoria decrease in sexual functions the treatment is surgical removal of tumor or by dopamine antagonists like bromocryptine so this is all about today's uh, lecture and inshallah tomorrow we'll go for the excess of the pituitary uh, anterior pituitary hormone diseases so till then stay tuned stay blessed and allah hafiz